Welcome to my video lecture for Psych 100, Unit 4, Module 1. Uh, this video I will present a lecture that I'm giving in my Psych 100 class. If you're watching this video, you should have my blanked out lecture notes document in front of you. If you don't have my blanked out lecture notes document in front of you, you can find them by going to Canvas. Log in to Canvas, go to Psych 100. On the left side of the Canvas interface, you'll see Modules. Click Unit 1, Module 1, and somewhere among those Module 1s, you'll see a document that has a title like P100 U4 Mod 1 Lecture Belief. That's my blanked out lecture notes. When you look at that lecture, it has the vast majority of the lecture notes you'll need. If you're just looking at the document that you download from Canvas, a lot of the words will be blanked out. And in going through this video, I will fill in those blanks so that you'll have a complete set of lecture notes by the end of this lecture. Now, this lecture deals with just one of the four modules that I plan to cover in the current unit. My plan is that Unit 4 will consist of four modules. The first one, Module 1, today is on Belief Bias Effect. Then a separate module, Module 2, will be on Attitudes and so forth. I'm not sure that I'll get through all five of these intended modules in the time that we have, but I will surely get through Module 1 and Module 2. Let's get started with Module 1. Uh, module 1 deals with our chapter on cognitive psychology. Uh, the current unit, Unit 4, covers these four chapters. Chapter on cognition, thinking, and language. Chapter on social psych. Chapter on personality. Uh, this is the order that they, um, this is not the order that they appear in the book, but this is the order that I'm going to discuss them in the course of lectures. Uh, first lecture is going to deal with the chapter on cognition, thinking, and language. Second lecture is going to deal with social psychology, and with whatever time we have remaining, I plan to give one or more lectures dealing with personality. Let's get started with the first lecture which deals with our chapter on cognition, thinking, and language. Specifically, um, this chapter deals with the subject of cognitive psychology. I thought I'd begin with general def definition for cognitive psychology. Ettinger defines it this way. Cognitive psychology is the approach to psychology that investigates the ways in which organisms process information, and it focuses on processes such as thinking, memory, language, problem solving, and creativity. That brings us to the first of our fill in the blanks. Uh, anytime you see something highlighted on my screen, that means it's a word that was blanked out of the blanked out lecture notes that you are looking at. So with the blank note, blanked out lecture notes in front of you, you should fill in our first blank with the word thinking. Today's module lecture is going to focus on a subtopic within cognitive psychology, the belief bias effect. Let's define belief bias effect. Belief bias effect is the tendency to accept conclusions that conform to one's belief and reject conclusions that do not conform, regardless of how logical or illogical these conclusions are. Uh, you've probably noticed that people believe what they want to believe, particularly when you're taking in information that can be interpreted in more than one way, such as the results of a scientific investigation. Very often, there's more than one way to interpret the results of that investigation. And in those situations, we often see the belief belief bias effect. People will accept a version of those conclusions that are consistent with their pre-existing beliefs, and they'll reject any interpretation of those conclusions that are inconsistent with their pre-existing beliefs. In fact, we're going to talk about an investigation and see a TED Talk video that deals with this issue. 
video that you're going to see in a few minutes and you'll watch this on your own it's not going to be included as part of this module but it's available at YouTube and I've got the link here that'll take you straight to uh, the video we're gonna see a video called "Are smart people ruining democracy It's 13 minutes long I need to lecture on this a bit before you watch the video so that you'll be able to get the most out of the video Imagine this. Imagine this. Imagine I describe an investigation to you. Uh, your job as the listener is to interpret the results from the investigation. I'm going to show you a table that presents the results from the investigation in statistical terms. Uh, the investigation is one that deals with the effectiveness of a new skin cream. Imagine pharmaceutical companies developed a skin cream that they believe would be effective in treating rashes that people develop. Independent variable in this investigation is whether or not participants was using this new skin cream. The dependent variable, the outcome variable, did your rash get better or worse after you use this skin cream for a period of time? It's going to be better or worse will be the possible outcomes. You conducted moderately big investigation with 426 participants, uh, assigned some of them to use the new skin cream. Big group of people, 298 people were asked to use the new skin cream. Somewhat smaller group of people, 128 people were asked to not use the new skin cream. After six weeks, you asked each participant, did your rash get better or did your rash get worse? That's where we're going with this investigation. The results are in, and the results from the investigation are presented in this table. Um, we have a two by two table. The horizontal rows of the table indicate which group participant was in. Uh, the first horizontal row uh, represents patients who did use the new skin cream and the second horizontal row represents patients that did not use the new skin cream. Uh, the table consists of two vertical columns these columns present the results. First column on the left represents people who said their rash got better. Second column on the right represents people who said that their rash got worse. So when you look at the components of this 2x2 two two table, uh, there were 223 people who used the skin cream and said that their rash got better, for example. Uh, for example, there were 21 people who did not use the skin cream and said that their rash got worse and so forth. You can see we have the question, what result does the study support? And two different options that can be chosen down here. Since that type is kind of small, I've typed it up myself. And I would like to pose the question to you. Uh, to think about it before you go any further in looking at this document or watching this video. Uh, if I were doing this in regular classroom, I would pose the question to the students in my class. Were the people who did use the skin cream more likely to get better than those that did not? Were the people who did use the skin cream more likely to get better than those who did not. In other words, is the skin cream a good product? Uh, if you use the skin cream, are you more likely to get better compared to if you had not used the skin cream? I take that question, pose it to my class, encourage them to look at the results at this table, encourage my students, use a calculator if you want to compute some percentages if you think that would be helpful. Uh, discuss it with your neighbor. I typically in a regular classroom meeting have them break into small groups and talk about it. Uh, ponder this for a few minutes and in a second we'll see what conclusions you arrived at and whether your conclusions match up with the correct way to interpret these results. Uh, take a second, turn off the video, think about the results in this table, think about my question. Well, you have resumed playing the video. 
let's before we go over the correct results the correct way to interpret the results in this table uh, let's talk about the approach that uh, successful students use in deciding how to interpret the results in this table that is strategy that's used by the people that arrive at the correct conclusion the way to interpret a table like this is to take it one horizontal row at a time don't look at the whole table just look at one of the horizontal rows for example the first row represents the people that use the skin cream for just those people who use the skin cream what percent of them got better and what percent of them got worse so you would focus only on our first horizontal row the people that use the skin cream of the 298 was that it of the 298 people that use the skin cream what percent of them got better or what percent got worse then as a separate step do the same with the people that did not use the skin cream as a separate step focus only on the second horizontal row the patients that did not use the skin cream this was 128 people I believe of these 128 people what percent of them got better what percent of them got worse once you've computed these percentages and have entered little percentages into the squares you'll be in a better position to answer a question uh, the question were the people who used the skin cream more likely to get better than those who did not scroll a little lower in our document and I provide the percentages if you focus only on the people that use the skin cream uh, the 298 people that use the skin cream 75% of them got better and 25% of them got worse but if you focus instead on the 128 people that did not use the skin cream you see a different picture 84% of them got better and 16% of them got worse so when you look at the percentages rather than the raw numbers it becomes clear you'd be better off if you did not use the skin cream of the people that didn't use the skin cream a uh, bigger percentage got better compared to the people that did not use the skin cream you see results like this it's consistent with the idea that the skin cream is actually worse for people it makes it less likely they'll get better I probably say something to that effect in our document my question had been were the people who did use the skin cream more likely to get better than those that did not above table suggests the answer to the question is no people that used the skin cream were not more likely to get better uh, they were more likely to get worse than those that did not use the skin cream now interpreting a table like this involves making use of a set of skills that has a name you may not have been familiar with this name before this lecture you've just used your numeracy skills in solving the preceding problem let's define our term numeracy is the ability to reason well about quantitative information and to draw appropriate inferences from data uh, we have a fill in the blank here in yellow numeracy is the ability to reason well about quantitative information draw appropriate inferences from the data uh, you're about to see a YouTube video video of a TED talk presented by a researcher named Dan Kahan that's looked into numeracy problems like this Kahan has found that in general people who score high on numeracy are more likely to interpret research results correctly now that's an important point to keep in mind before we go any further people that score high on numeracy are more likely to inter interpret tables like this correctly and arrive at the correct conclusion in this case people who score high on tim uh, numeracy would be more likely to conclude uh, you're better off not using the skin cream but if that's all we knew it wouldn't be terribly interesting to a psychologist we now come to the interesting part this preceding skin cream was not politically charged nobody cares much about the effectiveness of skin creams Khan was interested in the question would high numeracy people still answer the question correctly if the fictitious study dealt with a controversial topic that is what his TED talk video will discuss a couple of questions I want you to have in mind as you watch the video question one 
What's the two word term for the tendency of people to selectively credit and discredit evidence in a way that actually pursues some goal other than the truth of the matter? It's question one that I want you to have in mind as you watch the video. What's the two word term for the tendency of people to selectively credit and discredit evidence in a way that actually pursues some goal other than the truth of the matter? Question two that I want you to have in mind as we watch the video. Under what circumstances were the high numeracy subjects more likely to correctly interpret the information in the results table? Under what circumstances were the high numeracy subjects more likely to correctly interpret the information in the results table? Now notice as you watch the video that you're about to watch, uh, Kahan will present a lot of figures to illustrate his results. These will be coming at you fast and furious. Don't worry if you don't understand all the details of the studies as it's coming at you. Mostly just look for the answers to my questions and I'll talk about what's important about it later on in my presentation. Now would be the time for you to watch the video that I want you to watch. If you have my lecture notes document in front of you, there should be a link in that lecture notes document. If you're using Windows, hold down control while you click this link and it should take you to the uh, YouTube video that's about 13 minutes long. Uh, if you would, Take a minute, watch that 13 minute video, and then we'll resume with my video. Return back to my document, return back to this video, and pick up where we left off. All right, let's assume you have watched Dan Kahan's video, Are Smart People Ruining Democracy? I'd ask you to think about two questions as you watched it. One of them, question one, what's the two word term for the tendency of people to selectively credit and discredit evidence in a way that actually pursues some goal other than the truth of the matter? The answer is, I'm not going to share the answer with you. Notice it's blanked out and I have it filled it in this time. Uh, this is one where I do want you to watch the video and find the answer. If you watch the video and you still can't find the answer, then you can ask me about it uh, during our online test review session that we'll have prior to test number four. Same thing is true regarding question number two. Under what circumstances were the high numeracy subjects more likely to correctly interpret the information in the results table? Uh, when the information in the table blanks their ideological position. When the information in the table blanks their ideological position. I'll let you watch the video to figure out what word you need to insert in that uh, highlighted blank bit of text there. I will say this. Uh, in the video, Khan talks about how liberals tended to answer correctly when the table suggested that gun bans work, and conservatives tended to answer correctly when the table suggested that gun bans don't work. Uh, this is the issue of belief bias. Uh, the fact that when you're presented with results from an empirical investigation and there's more than one way to interpret the results of those investigation, will you interpret the results correctly? What Kahan said was it depends. If you're politically liberal and if the results in the table support your politically liberal position, for example, the idea that gun bans work, uh, then yeah, you would get the results from the table correctly as long as the results in the table are consistent with your political views. And by the same token, if you're politically conservative and you saw the version of the table that indicated that gun bans don't work, in that situation, you'd be more likely to interpret the results correctly. If the results in the table were consistent with the conservative view that gun bans don't work, you'd be likely to get those results correct if you were politically conservative. I'd like to show this video because it's a nice illustration of this belief bias effect that's discussed in Ettinger. Implications of Kahan's research. It's a little bit disturbing. 
Uh, implications of Kahan's research. Kahan argues that simply improving numeracy skills will not necessarily lead to agreement on controversial topics. Kahan argues that even highly numerate people are influenced by their beliefs. Even highly numerate people will display this belief bias effect. Numeracy skills are a good thing. You're more likely to interpret results from empirical investigations correctly if you score high on numeracy, but only if the results from the investigation are consistent with your pre-existing beliefs anyhow. Uh, if the results from an investigation support liberal beliefs, you'll probably interpret that investigation correctly as long as you were already politically liberal before you read the study. By the same token, if the results from an investigation support politically conservative beliefs, you're likely to interpret those results correctly, but only if you were politically conservative before you viewed, before you viewed the results from the table. Uh, that's kind of the big picture implications of the research that Kahan talks about in this YouTube video. This is my, the end of my lecture for module one. At this point, you have filled in most of the blanks that you needed to fill in in your blanked out lecture notes. Uh, the few blanks that I did not give to you, you can fill in by viewing the YouTube video uh, that I um, have referred you to. Uh, there will be more modules for this unit. Uh, look for them to be uploaded as soon as I have them ready to go.